Krishna. And uh, today I want to talk to you about uh, security in .NET, uh, specifically how we build um, the security for our applications, how we uh, uh, secure uh, the access to our APIs, and uh, how we ensure that uh, uh, users that we uh, manage, right, that they are secure, that they are secure on the web. Uh, so today's agenda is um, we're going to look at uh, typical security architecture. Um, uh, then we're going to look at identity providers, what what they are and what they do. Uh, then we we'll look at resources, uh, the clients and tokens, and then we're going to see the demo with uh, some of the examples of identity providers and uh, clients. Uh, so uh, nowadays, the modern security architecture is a bit different than it was, uh, say. Um, a couple of years ago, let's say 10 years ago, five years ago, it was pretty prevalent that you had your own database and uh, with, uh, you had your own API and you, you kept your users in your database and in case your user wanted to access some data, right? You you, you needed, you, you built your own uh, authorization to, to check user credentials that uh, they enter in the web and uh, authorize them against uh, what do you have in your user database? <clears> or <throat> is it as, uh, mm, as, as, as web grows and everybody has his own service, um, the the burden of maintaining the users uh, become uh, it becomes very hard manageable, right? And uh, uh, this uh, mm, uh, gave uh, an impulse to, uh, to start using uh, a single service where you would Authenticate and keep user information, and auth authenticate within that within that service. Uh, uh, in contrast to keeping your own user database, right? Uh, so um, this is the new uh, the new uh, uh, kind of a or the modern uh, type of security architecture right now. You would have um, your user to log in into any kind of uh, these kinds of applications, right? You can have a uh, a native application in the mobile, you can have a single page application in the web, or you can have a web uh, application both, both with ASP.NET or any other framework that you that you use. Um, and they will contact your uh, uh, identity provider. So identity provider is someone who knows about the user, uh, uh, who holds the credentials of that user and, give, and can uh, issue a token and information about that user, or it can issue an uh, uh, access permissions or uh, an access token. So we're going to talk about tokens a little bit later in this course, but the important thing that you want to understand that you no longer uh, authenticate your users by your own. Uh, there is an entity provider who does that for you. But still you have your resources, right? Uh, and you want you want user to access the, those resources. Use, uh, uh, so uh, there is a, uh, you have an authentication server and a resource server typically sitting on the same place. Uh, uh, giving you access to the to the resource. And the important thing to note, notice here is that identity provider and the, your resource server, where you keep your data, where you uh, where you provide your services, right? Your APIs to the user, they have a trusted connection. So it means that uh, this uh, typically is hosted in some kind of a VPN in your infrastructure, or uh, there is a trust built uh, between them. So nobody, the, the, the connection here is secure. So the uh, uh, this also um, applies to a confidential clients, which is a web application that is also hosted in the, some kind of a uh, quote unquote private network, right? Or private VPN, where uh, the exchange between these parties cannot be tampered with. So nobody can, can kind of go and, and look for the traffic, right? How this happens. So this, this happens in the background, right? So you, you normally attackers cannot cannot go there and see there. Uh, in contrast, there are the, there are the public clients such as native application and single page applications. They are uh, mm, uh, uh, they exchange information with resource servers and any providers on the untrusted connections so on the on the open web. So typically, this happens through a browser. So every traffic that they communicate goes through a browser and hence goes to through different um, uh, 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 spots, right? In, until they reach the resource server. So this is this is important here to understand for uh, to uh, to understand further concepts of how uh, uh, how the clients are configured. Uh, so uh, 
An entity provider is really uh, something uh, that, that, that knows the user and has some details about the user. And um, uh, you would typically look at them as a kind of a public and private uh, at entity providers. Uh, so by public, uh, I mean the the the, the, the clients that uh, the, the providers that already have um, uh, some base of a user and the the the, uh, the chances are that the, the these identity providers already have the uh, the user that you want to log in are already already there like like Google Twitter Facebook and many many almost everybody has Google accounts so it means that uh, these identity providers already know about about you, your user in contrast private identity providers um, uh, this is uh, uh, these providers are typically uh, 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 where where you would would want to create a user first and then um, uh, and then manage that information. This is very often used for for scenarios like um, uh, building applications for uh, for enterprise, right, or for your um, private clients, right. So, for instance, um, uh, let's say um, you build a, a medical application, right. So, uh, and you you want to have a database of users. You don't want your users uh, authenticated with Google because, well, eventually the 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 information about uh, the your users will, will land into Google's database, but you want to keep <clears throat> control of that user's database. So you you opt in with a kind of a private, quote unquote, private identity provider. So these some some of the examples are Auth0, uh, Okta, Azure AD, or Identity Server. Um, these are uh, typically they can they are configured and they look very similar, right? Like they work work very similar, but the choice lands here is. Um, uh, uh, here uh, is that you you choose where mm, uh, mm, choose the identity provider uh, uh, for your client uh, based on what they already have. Like many many clients have Azure right uh, Active Active Directory, so you, they, they they store their users in Active Directory. So you probably go with Azure AD to to get to all authenticate to authorize your users. Um, uh, so some clients uh, opt in with Okta, but it's, uh, it's a uh, kind of a more enterprise style uh, identity provider where uh, gives you um, a lot of uh, access and man uh, manageabilities for your groups of users. It gives you the ways you can authenticate, uh, like multi-factor and other stuff. And uh, uh, Auth0 is also a product. Uh, of Okta, but it's kind of a for, for a smaller smaller scale enterprises that, that are just starting. And then uh, last but not least, there there is a, a identity server, uh, probably most mostly beloved by uh, .NET developers uh, for many years. Uh, uh, this is very um, uh, uh, flexible version that you can build with .NET code and host it on your private in infrastructure, right, in, in your vir virtual machine. Uh, uh, so. Uh, mm, if your scenario has the uh, uh, on-prem version, right, hosting your um, uh, uh, your services on-premises, right, you 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 probably uh, can look into that uh, identity server, and we will be looking into an uh, example of uh, uh, identity server today. Uh, so pricing options are different here. Uh, uh, up to the fifth version, the identity server was free. The community edition was free. Uh, from the fifth version, it's no longer free. But uh, uh, you still, uh, if you still comply with the uh, um, uh, with the rules, which is uh, um, up to one million revenue for, for your company uh, per year, uh, then then you are free to use the identity server uh, community edition versions. So Azure, Okta, and Auth0 are uh, our paid missions. Uh, all right, so these are identity providers. Uh, now, uh, so the purpose for identity providers uh, is to issue tokens, right? You know, there are two types of tokens, uh, uh, ID tokens or an access token. So these, these are very different tokens. Look at ID tokens as something that identifies a user. It knows, uh, it gives the information about the user who logged in, uh, they are personal identifiable information. So this is important to know here because uh, you all know that, uh, for instance, in Europe, we comply to GDPR, right, many, many times. And uh, we need to keep the uh, ID tokens secure unless if, if by any case ID tokens leak uh, any information about the user, we, bro we break the, the compliance and hence we, we get charged as fines. Access tokens are, uh, are a bit different. Access tokens do not... Um, carry information about the user. So these tokens only provide you the access to your resource. So uh, 
think about this as a as a card, right? So you have a card without a name on it, and you well, typically you you are allowed to access some places with this card. So uh, this card card is is kind of a opaque. It doesn't it doesn't know who the holder is. It doesn't care who the holder is. All it cares is that it has a set of permissions that lets you in into some resource. Uh, so these are ID tokens and access tokens. Uh, now uh, the configuration of uh, many of the identity providers. Uh, uh, is um, uh, that they uh, provide you an endpoint where you uh, uh, issue your requests to, right, uh, or application requests to, to get a token, right? So uh, the configuration uh, of the uh, uh, identity provider is typically on this uh, endpoint. It's a well-known open configuration, and we can go to look at this. Uh, so it provides all of the information about how that identity provider is configured, what type of flows does it offer what what endpoints what um, uh, keys does it uh, uh, use to um, uh, to protect uh, the, the the tokens etc we'll look at the, uh, the, those later uh, now these two tokens are important the token and authorized endpoint so the token uh, endpoint is is an endpoint where you get a token right uh, and the authorized uh, is also the endpoint that uh, issues tokens, but it also issues uh, authorization codes. So authorization codes is something that you exchange, uh, you can exchange for a token. So um, uh, uh, so th there are there are slight differences between uh, uh, author authorization flows that uh, uh, you can configure with the with ND providers. So therefore uh, you can uh, use different endpoints to get your uh, tokens. Uh, uh, the useful endpoint here is also the user info endpoint, which uh, which you can use to get information about the user that, that is logged in, given that you have a token. So uh, some of the examples of resources that you might use, so this can be your API that you build, uh, any type of API is like a groups API or dashboard API. Uh, or whatever API that, that you want to uh, protect your access to. You can have a graph API, my MS Graph API that gives the, the, the information about uh, what application user uh, users uh, are using, uh, what permissions do they have, uh, et cetera. Uh, or a Twilio API, some of the popular um, APIs of third, third parties. Um, clients. Now, as I mentioned, Client is an application that your user and user uses uh, to uh, to get an access to, right? For instance, a web application or a web page. There are also these are called the public clients, right? So public clients are um, uh, the ones that that uh, that you develop, right, and you distribute, right? <clears throat> so. These are not uh, uh, these are one one of, uh, one of the example would be uh, a single page application right where the source code is completely hosted um, or, or loaded into the browser. So these are clients are uh, are, are, uh, are are considered to be uh, uh, the clients that cannot keep a secret because any anything that you put there in your in your source code that eventually uh, is out there in the open you can you can just uh, decompile the code or just just read the, the the JavaScript code in the browser and get get the secrets right and concepts there are confidential clients confidential clients are the clients the source code is uh, hosted on the uh, on the uh, infrastructure of uh, of your uh, client or your infrastructure right so source code is not available to uh, 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 to, uh, to, uh, to to anyone but but you but the developer right uh, so uh, there is also a distinction between this. So a confidential client uh, represents uh, an identity and does not impersonate a user. So typically it's a, look at this as some kind of a service or, or, or a diamond, right? That, that, that you uh, configure to, to uh, call the API, for instance, um, generate reports or, or do the imports. From, from your API, and they don't need a user uh, uh, to log in, so the, the physical uh, person, right? But they are still clients because they are um, uh, the ones who authenticate, who need who need an access, right? Uh, so these are the distinctions between confidential and public clients. Uh, 
now we have the tokens, right? So uh, the token is really uh, is a JSON string, uh, base sixty four encoded. So uh, it consists of three parts: uh, a header, a body, and the signature. Um, uh, typically, in a header, you would find uh, the the algorithm, the hashing algorithm that uh, the, the the signature used to be uh, that the signature was uh, uh, was used to generate. Uh, you would also have the type. Uh, uh, of that token. So AT a means access token, a JWT means a JSON web token. So essentially all tokens, all uh, authorization tokens and uh, uh, identity uh, 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 tokens or ID tokens are JSON web tokens. Uh, but uh, uh, these are the distinction that you can see here in, in the time here. So the body is uh, uh, has some interesting properties of uh, uh, who was the issuer of that token? Like, what what identity provider was uh, issued this token? Uh, the timestamps, the expiration, uh, and uh, uh, authentication methods. For instance, here this password uh, uh, also has the ID of a client who requested the token, uh, and it has scopes. Uh, so, scopes is kind of a, a way to control uh, uh, what parts of your API. Uh, you have the access to, right? Uh, so if you have a big API, right, and you want you want to limit uh, uh, some some of the users or some of the clients, you want to limit what they can do with uh, with, with those APIs. So typically, uh, uh, describe that with a scope, right? So for instance, here I have a Postman scope, which means um, this uh, uh, this is the API that that, that was uh, 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 only uh, uh, meant for Postman, right? Uh, and there are also the um, uh, uh, the default scopes, like open ID scopes. So we'll talk about them in the next section. Uh, so ID token. Uh, ID token is very similar to uh, access token, but, but as I mentioned at the very beginning, uh, the ID tokens carry information about the user. So they don't really uh, have uh, the uh, scopes, for instance, right? Uh, so uh, this is purely information on who who, lo who logged in, right? But still, still they have had the same the same structure, right? They have uh, uh, the algorithm, the type is a JSON web token. They have an issuer, timestamps, uh, and they also have uh, a sort of a uh, parameter audience, right? So who this token was issued for, right? So uh, in this case. Uh, uh, this was specifically issued for uh, for this type of client or for Postman client. And if by any chance this token lands into uh, some different hands, or by any chance if uh, uh, you you you, uh, you you steal a token from uh, from somebody and try to use for your application, this is not going to work because you you have an audience that uh, states uh, what this token is issued to. Uh, right. So. Uh, now uh, the uh, the identity providers work uh, on a certain types of protocols. So the uh, the uh, auth protocol uh, is the protocol that describes how um, how do you how the identity server issues an access token which protects the API, right? And the OpenID protocol is built on top of auth. But it, uh, the, but this is protocol that describes how do you issue the ID token, right? So the ID is, is about the user. Uh, so uh, the, the both protocols they uh, they uh, they work on a certain set of flows. Uh, so uh, just quickly, I'll go, I'll go quick quickly through them. The, these are the these flows uh, deserve a, a separate uh, uh, demo or a separate topic for that. So I'd really suggest. Uh, if you have a, uh, uh, if you will, uh, if you're interested in this, uh, go to uh, to resources and uh, and learn about flows. So uh, a password fl uh, grant flow means that uh, the user authenticated with the username and password, which is not secure at all, and actually will be uh, is already uh, 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 not supported for many of the identity providers uh, because the the issue here is that. 
uh, user needs to enter a username and password and transfer that username and password to your API over the untrusted connection. So it means that even although your traffic is encrypted with the HTTPS, there is still a great chance that this the the user the username and the password the credentials of the user that wants to use your API will will land into uh, uh, into bad hands, right? If if wanted. So uh, this is uh, a password grant. So implicit uh, implicit is. Um, uh, for for uh, for applications uh, that uh, do not uh, that cannot keep a secret. So typically, uh, a client uh, or uh, um, uh, that uh, requests an access token uh, needs to identify itself with the uh, client ID and client secret, right? So uh, for the applications that cannot keep a secret, such as single page applications or uh, or mobile apps uh, you don't have a secret you cannot store it but but you still need a token right uh, so the way you do it with the, you do kind of a, an, an implicit uh, flow which uh, uh, will request the uh, token directly from identity uh, uh, provider so your application will issue a request hey, to authorization endpoint and that authorization endpoint will issue uh, back a token which is a uh, kind of a okay, but uh, it's not also uh, very secure uh, uh, because when uh, when an indie provider returns a token to to a client, it doesn't really know uh, if the token uh, was received by a client or not. So this is kind of look at this a kind of a one step uh, or two step process. Your client issues a request to to get a token to that entity provider. Uh, and then I think the provider verifies the information and just uh, gives back a token via the return URL. But it, the identity provider never really gets a confirmation from uh, uh, from the uh, requesting application that the requesting application actually received the token that, uh, that it issued. So this is kind of a not very secure, but this is the only way that you uh, you will get uh, you will request a, a token uh, from uh, from an identity provider if you if your client does not keep a secret. Uh, now, uh, there are uh, additional two flows, the authorization code flow and the and authorization code flow plus Pixie. Uh, so these are very similar in, 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 uh, in contrast that uh, Pixie is a kind of additional layer of security uh, for authorization code flow. So the authorization code flow works a bit different. So it uses two endpoints, right? So previously you just, you requested a, a, a a token from authorization endpoint and with this flow you would use also a token endpoint that we mentioned previously uh client credentials is a uh, is a type of flow for a confidential client so uh the the confidential client is someone who who keeps a secret right so who you you uh, uh the the source code of that client is not is not out there in the in the public so it you can you can store a secret and client ID, client secret and you can use those uh credentials to to request a token and there's also a hybrid flow. Uh, uh, it's, uh, 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 it's, well, it's, it's, uh, uh, this is a flow where you would request um, uh, a token, uh, ID token or access token uh, uh, over the uh, uh, return URL or directly from authorization endpoint, right? And you can also request a code and then exchange that authorization code for uh, for one of these tokens, ID or uh, ID token or token. Uh, so briefly, these are uh, sort of the basics of how the modern uh, authentication works. Uh, now let's uh, let's look at the uh, the example of the uh, uh, identity provider setup. So um, we look at that in the uh, server. So chances are that that you uh, encounter that you have encountered uh, identity server already are high and the chances that you will encounter uh, is also high this is very popular among .NET developers so uh, uh you would you, know, you would typically uh, 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 uh let's so let's look at how we will uh configure an identity server so <clears throat> so an identity server comes but the uh, but the preset of configurations. Um, so uh, it it uh, uh, it uses a, a certain concept in order to uh, to do its job, right? A certain model. Uh, so important things here to note is the uh, uh, identity resources. These are uh, these are users or clients, right? Or 
scopes. So this is something that, that represents an identity. So uh, uh, in order for your identity server to, uh, to work with those identities, you first need to set up what identities you, 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 you are going to use. Uh, so uh, you will... Um, uh, You'll add them as an entity resource right here. So then, then the clients. So we, we talked about clients uh, uh, and identity, ser identity server or any identity provider needs to know what client will be calling it, right? What client is allowed to call uh, uh, and uh, uh, request for tokens. Uh, so a typical client setup would consist of client ID, client, and, and client secret. Uh, then uh, uh, you would configure the allowed grant type. So a uh, uh, grant type is that how uh, that client will be uh, uh, authenticating to identity server. So uh, uh, client credentials is something that will use a client ID, client secret, essentially meaning that uh, your uh, your client will need to, to provide these two parameters here when, when it asks for a tokens. Uh, also can uh, you can, uh, request for specific scopes, right? For, for what type of uh, APIs uh, do, uh, does the client want an, want an access to? So you can configure it, it, it here, right? Uh, as a load scopes. Uh, another type of client would be the, uh, uh, the, the, the web client, right? Or, uh, or a client that, that, that has uh, a user involved. Right, so where where where, uh, where a user would go and uh, and put in their credentials in order for that application that you that you wrote uh, to uh, to get uh, to get an access uh, to, to the resources that they provide. Uh, again, uh, same setup here. It's a client ID, client secret. Uh, this is the list of the allowed grant types. So. Uh, uh, there are a uh, list of uh, options here, and uh, uh, I'd really love to go uh, through a couple of them uh, here. So, so, um, so this is new. So hybrid. This is something that we mentioned, uh, uh, where uh, a client can uh, uh, request a, a code uh, and uh, uh, or an access token. Uh, a client credentials is something that. Uh, a client authenticates with the, uh, whether it's client ID, client security. We already mentioned that. Uh, so just the code. So th this means that the uh, the client or the application that you will uh, uh, that you are, that you are building uh, will only be allowed to uh, request uh, uh, an authorization code, which is later uh, transformed or which is later exchanged for uh, for ID uh, for ID or uh, or an access token. Uh, so this one is new. Uh, this is client initiate backend uh, uh, authorization. Uh, oh, this is some, kind of a, an advanced topic where, uh, where you would have two different types of channels um, uh, authenticating uh, uh, or, or authenticating a user. Uh, so think about a banking application where let's say you have you have a bank officer sitting uh, and and, uh, and and wanting to and wanting to manipulate your your data and your account but uh, uh, but the uh, but the the thing is that you don't want to provide the, the, the your your credentials to that to that person right or to that web client let's say he's using the browser so you would go and authenticate for instance with your mobile phone and uh, voila, the the uh, the agent that is sitting in the browser has has the access to to uh, uh, to configure your account. So this is kind of involves two different agents, right? For for the same authentication process, right? A mobile, let's say, or uh, and the browser. Uh, right. So uh, these are combinations uh, uh, of the grant types. So uh, uh, you you can configure this this if you want your uh, uh, your application to uh, uh, to request uh, 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 to authorize with the different different uh, different ways. For instance, code and client credentials. Uh, the hybrid. We already mentioned that. So we're hybrid and client credential. Implicit. We already mentioned. So this this will be the the token will be uh, shared uh, back to your client through the browser through the through the open connection. 
uh, implicit and client connection, uh, uh, resource only password is, is, the, is the flow that you mentioned at the very beginning. This is the this is the very uh, uh, the very um, first uh, way uh, to request uh, a tokens and uh, will be soon deprecated. Uh, all right, so uh, we'll uh, uh, we'll use our web client to request uh, tokens using uh, code. Uh, so um, uh, now uh, uh, one additional uh, configuration for uh, uh, interactive clients uh, 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 are the redirect URIs. Right? So redirect URIs is where uh, uh, your uh, token or a code uh, will return to once the, uh, the identity provider or identity server, uh, in this case, will issue uh, token to. So for in our case, this is the URL where we where, where identity server will redirect a code, the authorization code, and then the authorization code will be exchanged for a token. Uh, the logout URLs, um, uh, so uh, this is uh, required in order uh, for uh, an identity server to know how to log out you, uh, you from uh, uh, from your uh, uh, from your application. Uh, right. So this is an identity ser server setup. Uh, we won't go into deep how they configure it. You just can download uh, the, the identity server uh, code and, and play with it. Uh, we'll now look at the uh, the client. So um, first one on the list will be uh, the web client. Uh, so this is uh, an application that. Uh, uh, involves a user, right? Uh, for 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 interaction. Uh, let's uh, let's start the identity server. And uh, let's look at our client setup. Uh, so an ASP.NET, right? Uh, in order uh, to protect your uh, your API, your Pages, your your server resources, right? You use the middleware, right? And the middleware I described it, uh, is uh, is is uh, 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 is controlled by the services that that you uh, that you um, uh, uh, configure. So uh, in our case, the authentication uh, uh, um, uh, services is what we need in order for a request to be authenticated, right? So this is this is already. A part where uh, you make a HTTP request to your application, and you want that uh, uh, to uh, uh, to be secure, right? You want you want that uh, uh, that no uh, uh, not authenticated uh, request will be uh, uh, will provide an access to. So you add authentication services by well simply uh, configuring the builder services and. You, all authentication. So the options here are interesting. So the, there are there are ways that you can authenticate your uh, HTTP request to your applications, right? So um, uh, you can do it with cookies, right? So uh, whenever a, a request comes with the cookie, you look at the cookie, and the, the, the right cookie is there. You you kind of you 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 authenticate. You say, okay, you impersonate the user. You know that user, and you get authenticated, right? You can also have. Um, uh, uh, better token authentication scheme, right? Where you would look into auth uh, authentication header and you would look into the the the, the value of that header. So uh, uh, by default, um, uh, the uh, ASP.NET middleware uh, doesn't doesn't know what what the default scheme is. So we need to tell it. So where to look for that authentication information? Uh, so this is how you configure it. You you uh, you add authentication. You configure options, right? So you, you say look for the cookies in order to authenticate this request. Now the default challenge scheme is that what should you do if there is no key, right? If 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 the user is not authorized, right? So uh, the default challenge scheme is uh, can be anything that that you configure for uh, 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 for. Uh, for authentication, right? So in our case, we will use the OpenID Connect uh, as a challenge scheme. And uh, uh, here's how it goes about uh, uh, OpenID Connect challenge. So um, whenever uh, an, a not authenticated request comes, right? There is no 
Fuki in our case, right? Uh, you will need to go to, uh, uh, you, 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 you'd want your application to redirect to identity provider, in, in our case, the identity server, to, to authenticate a user, right? So this is the authority, right? So this is where you, our identity provider or our identity server sits. So this URL is the URL for our identity provider. And uh, I've just launched it. So let's uh, quickly look at uh, uh, at our identity server configuration here. So uh, this is the configuration of the identity server that we just built, right? Uh, some interesting uh, endpoints that uh, the, I mentioned in the beginning. So uh, the, these are the authorization endpoint where you would go to authorize the user interactively, meaning that uh, a user needs will need to provide his username and password in order for your application to be allowed uh, to get uh, get an access token. So this is a token endpoint where you would typically go with the confidential plans where there is no user involved, right? You, you only have a client ID, client secret, and you use that client ID and client secret to get a token. You don't need a user uh, there. Um, user info. So user info is also an interesting endpoint. Is this, this is when you have a, a token, let's say it's an access token. It's not an ID token. An access token that does not provide information about the user, but you still want a user info, right, in your application. You'd go to use the info endpoint using that access token that you have. Uh, the, end, the end session endpoint is, uh, as you might have already guessed, this is where, where you would issue a request to, to log out a user. Uh, uh, the revocation is kind of a, if you have a, an existing token and uh, you, you, uh, you, uh, if you, you have issued a token to, to, uh, to, to, your, uh, to, uh, uh, to a client, to any uh, third party provider or anyone, and you want to, to, to revocate that token, you, you want to expire it abruptly. So this is the revocation endpoint. Um, the other ones would be uh, in the sections that uh, the scopes that are supported. These are uh, open ID scopes. Uh, so the open ID scopes is kind of a uh, scopes that are defined in the open ID uh, connect uh, specification. And the default scopes uh, in open ID uh, uh, define the information that you can get about uh, a user. For instance, the open ID and profile uh, email also would be uh, kind of a, a quote unquote default scopes uh, for uh, for the ID providers. So these are scopes that you include if you want to get information about more information about the user. Right? Open ID gives you a default information like the subject who who this token is issued to. Uh, the profile will give you more information about you, such as a first name, last name, etc. So you you control that what information you get from uh, from identity provider. You uh, you request in that token by including scopes. And I want to stress this a little bit because well, sometimes you just don't think and you you typically re request all scopes that 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 you kind of uh, maybe would uh, would use and maybe not. But this is important because. Remember that the token, that the ID token, is a JSON web token. It's it's base sixty four encoded, and that's it. It's not secure, right? So if you uh, request uh, the scopes that you normally don't need from an ID server, uh, such as profile, profile may include the email uh, of the user, and this is considered the PII, right? The personal identifiable information. And if by any chance uh, that token leaks to 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 someone somebody uh, uh, who has not, not very good intents, right? Uh, you are responsible for that. So think think very carefully. Do you really need uh, information about the user when you uh, what what information do you need do you need about the user when when requesting uh, scopes for from uh, ID token? Uh, these are custom scopes that you can add to control your APIs. Uh, the uh, and one of the default scopes is offline access. So offline access scope is the scope that you request if you want to do the refresh of your tokens in the background. So the tokens uh, have expiration time, right? And uh, if they expire, let's say in an hour. Uh, you typically don't want your user to go and log in again, right? You, you want you want them to use your website and and, and don't uh, don't really care. So if you use offline access, 
the identity provider, in this case, a case of NSA, will issue the, you the refresh token, which you can store in your application's cache, like in, in your client's cache or whenever, wherever you want. And whenever the original token, the access token or uh, ID token, uh, expires or nears to expiration, you can use that refresh token to get a new one, right? So offline access, again, gives you the uh, uh, the refresh token along with the token, ID token or code that, that you requested. Uh, these are claims. Uh, so claims are um, something that uh, describe a, a client or a user. Uh, uh, these are a bunch of default claims, uh, uh, but you can you can add your own. Uh, so that's it. This is the typical configuration of uh, um, uh, of uh, uh, in this case identity server. But any uh, other identity, uh, identity provider also has uh, this well known that open ID configuration endpoint that you can browse and and look into uh, the how or what. Uh, uh what are the configurations for um uh, for uh, uh for the specific uh provider right uh all right so um uh, back to um our application uh, so we have uh configured uh our uh, uh client to um uh to look for uh, uh, to um, to use uh, this URL as the identity pro as the identity provider, and uh, uh, we have provided the credentials of our client, the client ID and client secret, and we also say by uh, that we want to authenticate by code. So this means that uh, when this uh, uh, web client makes a request to uh, an identity provider, identity provider will issue a code first, and then the code will be exchanged for a token. So uh, these are the scopes that we request. Uh, remember the scopes control what type of information you, you 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 want about the user or what type of access do you want for your API. Uh, yeah, so um, this is the uh, uh, setting that uh, uh, you to uh, that you control where you get uh, the user claims for, right? So the user info endpoint, remember. The, the one end the endpoint that we mentioned earlier. Uh, save tokens is uh, is uh, how you how you save. Well, you you, you don't want to uh, request the tokens all the time, so you typically save your tokens here. So this is a simple configuration. Remember, so uh, uh, three steps here. You are a default authentication. Uh, in our case, we will be authenticated by cookies. Uh, the, this line here adds a cookie, meaning that uh, uh, we want to use cookies to uh, Create the uh, uh, service principle, the the object in the ASP uh, .NET that holds the information about your user, right? So this is how we impersonate a user, right? And we add the uh, 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 the scheme which we, we, we uh, that we will use to authenticate our users. Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, this is this is an infrastructure setup. Remember. Uh, to add um, uh, authentication and authorization uh, uh, dependency uh, 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 dependencies uh, into into the container, right? So add the line all authenticate user use authorization uh, use authentication and uh, yeah. So let's run the application then. Okay, so what happened here? So we launched at 5002. Uh, let me get this back just a second. So this application, the web client runs on, uh, let's go to properties, launch settings, this URL. So this is the application that we built, right? I want to access this application, but what what that application did it it required 
to be authenticated, right? They required cookies in that request that I just made. So it didn't see the cookie there, right? And what it did, it redirected me to the identity provider with that, with the, with that uh, challenge scheme that we configured to go and say, hey, go to this website and, and authenticate yourself. I don't know who you are, right? Uh, so uh, now I need to enter my credentials uh, for, in, in this case, this will be the default uh, credentials for uh, default user for the MD server, right? And uh, I will log in. What is this URL here? So uh, this is the URL that identity server will, will, will go back to, to exchange the authorization code in our case for a token, right? So this is URL encoded, but this is essentially the URL that we have seen, that we have seen here. Uh, that's the application uh, that we have seen here. Uh, just a second. Um, this was identity server. So this is the URL that we will get the uh, the access token. Uh, uh, let's look at the network here also, so that we track this. So first we we, we went to localhost 5002. It looked that I am not authenticated. It, it redirected me to uh, an ID provider to this authorized endpoint. Right. It put in the client ID. Uh, it put the redirect URL where I get where I need to get back. It put a response type code, scopes and code challenge is something for 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 security, right? For of this request, it's not important at the moment. So this is where I landed, right? This is all in the URL. Uh, now let's log in. So I'm now logged in into my local host, right? Into into my application. So what happened here is that when I uh, 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 entered my credentials, I got a call back from uh, identity server, right? Uh, let's look at the... Let's see here, here. Oh, there you go. So this this is where uh, the identity server sent the code to, and that code got converted into a cookie, right? So in the background, it exchanged the code for the access token, and from that access token, it uh, authenticated a user and made it a cookie. Okay, so this is this is important to to understand here because you never see the token. Right, you, you, the application only the, the the identity provider only send us back the uh, authorization code, and in the background exchange that for a token. So you never saw the token. And this is this is uh, this is a way. Uh, this is a very secure way, uh, or I would say more secure way than the uh, requesting a token directly from identity provider. Uh, so uh, yeah, so these are kind of the properties that we hear. And this is this is the access token right here. So this is this is just the page on the local host where you where I uh, dumped all the all of the all of the information that I uh, that I got from uh, from a token. Uh, now let's go back and look at the the other type of uh, uh, the other scheme of uh, authentication. Let's now uh, use uh, not the access code, but let's use implicit. Implicit meaning uh, that I will request a token from identity provider, not a code, but a token. So when my user logs in, when Alice log, logs in, the identity provider uh, sends us back a token, but not the code. Uh, for that, we will need to also change the configuration of identity server because remember that uh, our configuration for uh, Oh, this is already okay. So this is this is the configuration for the ND provider. So we change that. We allow this web client to do the implicit flow, and also we would need to do the same change in the web client, right? So that we request response type is not a code but uh, a token. 
So this means that this token will be returned uh, for, for us. You know, let's start the application. Start the ND provider. And let's start the web client. Okay, let's log out. We don't need that. Great. And let's go back to to our application. Remember, it's in a different port. Uh, we'll open the browser so that we look for for what what the exchange is. Uh, Okay, uh, so this is one of the precautions of uh, uh, or uh, of the identity server uh, is that you need to explicitly allow the access tokens via browser. And uh, remember that this is less secure option. So by default, the identity server is trying to impose as much security mechanisms as possible. So we want to, to go and configure an identity server to explicitly say that yes, we want we want access tokens through a browser. So uh, I need to stop this and I'll go to config. And uh, I'll need to allow, allow access tokens via browser. Sure. So now my my uh, my client uh, my client is allowed to get uh, access token to a browser. Let's run again. Post. Okay, let's go for response type. All right, uh, let's see what scopes that our application requested. Uh, open an e-profile verification. So these are the scopes that I am allowed to do and what scopes do I request? Uh, open an e-profile verification scopes clear. Uh, okay, uh, so one issue here is that I am requesting an open ID scope. And although my uh, configuration in identity provider is allowing to, uh, to request the open ID scopes, I am requesting the access token, but not the ID token. And uh, remember the open ID uh, scope is uh, uh, about the ID of a user, right? So it's, uh, uh, I cannot get, uh, an ID token uh, by requesting a, uh, uh, if I want to get an ID token, I need to I need to request an ID token, but not a token. So that's the problem here. So the response type should be ID token. I am asking for ID token. Uh, let's rerun the web client again. And let's quickly look at the, the configuration here. Yes, the implicit is the flow. Now let's start again. Okay, I'll probably need to re-host it again. Sorry about that. Good. So let's look at this again. 
I'm going to localhost 5002 is my application. So the same uh, the same sequence, right? So uh, I went to 5002, I got redirected to a dandy provider, but uh, this time uh, the response type should be ID token. So it means that I am asking for identity server for this, this, this screen, if you will, for this request that I will now fulfill, I'm asking to give me an ID token directly, but not the code. So I'll put an username and the password here. And uh, let's just clear this. So to be clean, I'm asking for login. And let's look at this authorization response really quickly. So as you as you can see here now, this this time uh, the identity provider right, which made the request to my uh, uh, endpoint authorization endpoint in the application uh, went and issued the ID token right. So this went directly through a browser. So uh, this uh, this is a bit. Uh, uh, different and a bit less secure, but in case your application uh, does not have a backend that can exchange an access token uh, for an ID token, or uh, I'm sorry, to exchange the uh, the uh, access code for a token, you may use this this flow as well. Uh, so uh, once you get the ID token, uh, you can inspect that token and for in your front end application for instance uh get the details of what that what that user is and one uh useful tool for that would be uh there are many 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 tools uh, that you can inspect uh, tokens uh but one useful tool would be jwt.io where you could go and inspect the tokens that you uh that you oops one copy uh, Sure that can can I? Oh, there you go. And you can inspect the tokens and, and look for the claims that, uh, that this uh, application uh, issued. Uh, so uh, that's it. Uh, before uh, uh, before we end this, uh, I want to just quickly go over the other identity providers that you have. So remember, identity server uh is kind of a free if you uh if your company earns less than a million dollars so you can use it for uh for your for your applications and host it on your on premises or uh, uh infrastructure uh if you uh if for any other reasons if for for revenue reasons or uh, you you don't you don't uh, uh you don't comply uh, i would suggest to look at uh, one of these the octa uh, which is uh, uh, kind of a, the the leading in the industry at any provider, I would say. Uh, and uh, um, uh, the product, the other product of Okta, the the uh, the Auth Zero. So um, this is kind of a more, uh, I would say, uh, uh, more uh, more friendly to those who don't who don't uh, uh, used to code, right? So any server is where you control with your with your C sharp code. And uh, uh, these are, are more kind of a, uh, uh, a UI oriented. Uh, so uh, you can go and register yourself without any uh, uh, any pay, right? You are, you are very limited here, right? You 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 don't have many many options here. And how many uh, applications do you have? But but you can still play around. And uh, all of the configurations uh, uh, for for this uh, uh, any provider. Uh, uh, are here and they would, would really be the same. So, for instance, as you previously saw that we we had a client ID called Web. Uh, well, here you can register your application, be uh, and uh, uh, configure all of the uh, uh, flows and um, uh, uh, the ways and the tokens here through through the UI. Uh, 
so uh, that's a, it's kind of a one option. And the other option is the uh, Azure Active Directory, right? If you uh, if you're on Azure, right? If you're uh, uh, if many of your uh, 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 users are uh, an Active Directory, whether it's on prem or in in cloud, this is really a, a better option because Azure Active Directory gives you a, a way uh, to uh, uh, to connect. Uh, uh, to the existing databases of your users, right? Uh, for instance, many, many, uh, many organizations uh, for years kept uh, kept their their users in their on-prem Active Directory, right? And Azure Active Directory gives you the ability to connect with on-prem, and therefore uh, the the you 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 can authenticate uh, the users for your applications by just uh, by, by configuring the applications. So. Uh, the way you go about configuring um, applications uh, in Azure, you'd go to app registrations. Well, first of all, you go to Azure uh, to Active uh, 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 the Directory here section. You go to app registrations. Uh, you add, you add a new registration. Um, you would say Web API or Web App. Let's say, for example. Uh, these are account apps. So uh, we'll skip this for now. You can explore it later, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll use this one. Uh, you need a redirect to a URI. Uh, so uh, for for, in, for our application, we will you will need to use this redirect URI. But remember, this is this is in the cloud, right? And we won't be able to uh, to hit localhost uh, uh, unless we configure uh, some sort of uh, 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 open endpoint on my machine. Unfortunately, well, we are not allowed to do that previously. Uh, so there are there are tools that you can you can use to route the traffic from a web website to your local host, but uh, but the company uh, security compli the uh, compliance uh, does not allow to do that. So, uh, but this is essentially the same as uh, as you would do with the code, uh, right? Let's say this is a web. You register that application. Okay, and you add a secret here. You you go to secrets, and you need to add a new client secret. You call it client secret, and you choose the expiration. I choose always choose always the the, the, the shortest one. And this is this is how you go about uh, registering your uh, 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 application in Azure. So now every user. That is in, uh, uh, the, in your organization is connected to uh, uh, to Azure can go and use your application uh, to log in. So can use its own credentials and uh, and log in. So you just uh, just replace the uh, the client ID and client secret here uh, on, your, on the client. So there is a web client configuration here. You would go like this. Don't worry, I'll delete this later. Uh, I'll need an ID of that application of mine. And uh, this scope will not be there, unfortunately, because this is this is a custom scope. And uh, the H the authority will be uh, it's graphmicrosoft.com. Just give me a second. I'll put in that. Uh, then we do writers. So it's, yeah, it's login microsoftonline.com. Oops. Instead of pasting. Uh, there you go. So here's the authority. Let's run web client again. And let's see if we will be able to authorize with Azure. Let's log out. Now, this is interesting because, uh, so I had, uh, I had already been logged in, right? So I had a cookie. Right, in my application, and now I'm signing signing out. 
So uh, now, uh, since I've configured that I'm no longer using an NAB server, uh, the on-prem version of, of it, but I'm using the, uh, the, the Azure Active Directory, it actually went and said, okay, you want to sign in? Uh, I'm going to call the endpoint of that identity provider that you just gave me, which is Azure Active Directory, and go sign out. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'll need to, uh, uh, I'll better open the, uh, the incognito window so that, that this, this uh, would... Uh, delete the cookie and work smoothly here. Uh, let's go with localhost 5002. And uh, what did we say? Why? Did I just stop it? Yeah, just a second. All right, so I have, I have many accounts, right? And uh, apparently I'll use this, this one. Uh, okay, that's that's great. Code token none. Okay, uh, great. So Azure does not allow me to uh, request an ID token, so I'll just request a token then. Again, the code. Okay, so this is very useful. So apparently, uh, uh, Azure from uh, from the default does not allow me to get a token uh, via browser, presumably. So it wants to use a more secure mechanism of exchanging a code for a token, which is a uh, which is our uh, which is a authorization code flow. Uh, let's try it one more time. So it, it can be both ways, right? We can configure a client to to do a different uh, 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 authorization flow, right? And, or we can configure uh, an identity provider to allow uh, a different uh, 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 authorization flow. For now, I'm just 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 using the the, the configuration of the client. But uh, uh, really, what you should start from is from configuring the identity provider. And then, really, when you, when you design an architecture of your, the US security architecture, you really think of uh, identity provider first and the flows that you want uh, you, your uh, client applications to use as opposed to uh, the, the client. If there is a case that you already have that identity provider, such as Let's say this example, right? You already have an Azure configured, uh, and uh, the the application uh, registrations already configured in Azure. You would need to tune in your client instead of the, the way that, that I'm doing right now. So one more time. Yes. So uh, this is now the, uh, the the consent screen, and this is something that really uh, I think uh, uh, is better designed that uh identity server right uh so uh now the uh, uh azure id uh explicitly provides the screen where i as a user need to consent for uh, uh for the access for the application right so identity server did not provide this prompt and microsoft was uh more graceful to to provide this prompt uh for default so this is why I actually help uh, uh, kind of Microsoft products. So the consent screen is uh, something that you as a user, as a person, need to explicitly give the uh, permission to the application, right? So Web App is the application that we built, right? 
request my name, picture, and username. These are default claims from OpenID, right? So uh, from the profile. So um, I'm okay with that. I'm okay for that application that I just built to, to use my as a user username and uh, picture and the name. So I'm going to consent. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, that's good. One more error here. This uh, valid secret provided. Just a second. That's going to be the last stop here. Let's go here. Certificates and secrets. Apparently, I've copied the ID, not the secret. I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah, this is the client secret ID, not the secret. Is it really so short? Copied. Okay, it's short. Yeah. Uh, okay, one more error here. So uh, my application uh, validates uh, the issuer. So um, let's see. Uh, this is the middle one that I've added here. So this is not shouldn't be here. So the thing is, well, the the as you can as you can probably uh, guess, well, the, I have been successfully authenticated by uh, by Azure, but my application also required additional uh, checks there, right? Specifically in the in this line, which I just deleted, uh, I required the email verified uh, claim, right? But which was not in the claims that. Uh, Azure Active Directory issued, so I moved that. So this is something was whoops for uh, for demo purposes. So now should we should go okay? What about that? Oh, let's log in again. Okay. Token is zero. All right. Um, so we we're, we're already out of time, I guess. Here and uh, I'm, I'm getting some some weird errors here. Uh, I'll uh, I'll need to check this configuration and fix that. I'll provide that with the with the application code. This is probably some misconfiguration here with the uh, with my application, which is uh, it's code. Right, uh, save tokens. Okay, uh, yeah, so uh, I think uh, this will take a little bit more time for me to troubleshoot, so I don't, I don't wanna take your time here. But uh, the idea is that uh, you have now looked into, uh, into uh, different identity providers, uh, different types of identity providers. You've looked at the uh, clients, how you configure a client, right? You've looked at the, uh, uh, access tokens and ID tokens and how they can be requested from those identity providers. And you looked at how do you how you configure your uh, authentication uh, for the application. Uh, so uh, the uh, the key takeaway here is that there are different uh, flows uh, 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 for um, uh, uh, for requesting a token, right? These are described by configure configuring your uh, response type uh, on your client and configuring uh, the uh, uh, grant types uh, on your uh, application registration. Uh, so uh, these are uh, here, right? Uh, so these are flows how you exchange. Uh, important uh, to remember here that whenever you create an application, you need to register with uh, uh, that application within your identity provider, providing the client ID client secret grant type, redirect URIs, uh, 
uh, and uh, log out, uh, redirect your eyes. Everything else is, uh, will be uh, optional and variable for different NMB providers. So uh, some NMB providers will allow tokens via by browser, some not. So read carefully for the documentation for it. And, uh, uh, and yeah, so I guess uh, uh, I guess that's it for me now. I'm uh, uh, apologies for that. Uh, that that didn't work out with the uh, with the Azure AD. Uh, I'll fix the problem and um, uh, uh, upload the, uh, the, uh, the sample code as a uh, as a separate client with uh, with uh, with Azure. Uh, so uh, yeah, so you can later on refer to uh, to this example. That's it for me. Um, uh, thank you for uh, for listening. Um, I don't know uh, if, uh, if we are um, uh, having questions. I'm more than welcome uh, for your uh, questions. Then.